Given a choice, would you rather have an uglier or a prettier car? Prettier, of course. We have eyes and we want to be pleased. That's fairly simple. But what if I told you some cars were made ugly on purpose because of some X, Y, Z reason? Yeah. Hey, I'm Stipe. And in today's video, Brittany's Cratch. A guy with a mustache and some cars that had a reason for being ugly. So let's go. Number 7 Don't be fooled, just because it's low, wide, and has angry headlights doesn't mean it looks good. This is just something we've been taught to like in car design. Take a look and you'll notice that none of the parts seem to fit and flow. It's like they came off different cars with different sizes. Broken lines here, there, everywhere. It has huge holes, paparazzi windows for your genitals, mm -hmm. and a massive wing that was placed in the ugliest spot ever. Look at it. Couldn't it be moved a bit further back? Well, the answer is no, because Senate was designed to cut air, go fast, and to hell with your eyes. But why did they even bother with making it road legal then? I shouldn't complain though. When stuck in traffic, there isn't enough rushing air to cool it down, so it just catches fire. Yeah, that looks better. Number 6 Some 50 years ago, Citroen introduced the DS, a car so ahead of its time, it stayed relevant and in production for the next 20 years. It was one of the most innovative cars ever, simply because it dared to think differently. And that's exactly what Citroen tried to pull off again with the C6. While everyone was focused on making the same sexy tuxedo car, the French weren't. Rather than sporty handily, it was all about comfort, and I quote, an adequate acceleration. And what about this styling? A fastback, a shooting brake, saloon shape of sorts. That's also coupled with a dished rear glass, a tiny perky ass with some R2D2 taillights, and a weird elongated front. Okay, it is different, I'll give them that, but when everyone is trying to design a beautiful car, thinking differently will make you end up with an ugly one. Needless to say, it didn't sell well. Ah, merde. Number 5 Porsche's Quasimodo had a problem to solve. How to make a sexy looking coupe that has four proper doors and can seat just as many grown-ups. Hmm. It is impossible to make a nice sloping roof without breaking the necks of the people sitting in the rear, so the hump is unavoidable. But the new car looks good, so how come? Well, what if I told you that the new car also has a hump, but it's just using clever trickery to make it look smaller? First off, the rear windows go further back, making this whole metal area feel much smaller and lighter. And then there's a small ducktail spoiler finishing off the slope and breaking up the hump. That makes all the difference. So why didn't they do it the first time? Because this man was the CEO of Porsche at the time. He thought that his mustache looked good. And then when it was time to approve the Panamera, he also thought, yes, that's sexy. Meow. Number 4 At the turn of the century, Ford decided it needed to globalize some popular models. Why build two different cars for Europe and America when one would suffice? Ford Focus was the first car to do so, and with the first generation, everything was fine. However, when the second generation came about, the factory in Michigan wasn't quite ready, and Ford didn't have much cash to change that anyway. So instead of paying for the shipping of the new models from Europe, they redesigned the old model on a budget and just called it the new. Look at it! Ford couldn't even put a front grille properly in place since they cheaped out and gave it only two strips instead of three. The whole front bumper was as unimaginative as it gets, and the fake side vent didn't fool anyone about its sporty potential. It's ugly and pathetic, but it had to be, otherwise Ford would have gone bankrupt, and then bye bye to these. Number 3 For some reason, women really like those disgusting pugs. So Nissan figured out if they make a car just as ugly as the dog, the girls will be lining up in the front of showrooms. Right? Well, CEO greenlit that idea, and the ugly Micra hatchback was born. And then there was the extra girly CNC version, which was just another level of ugly. Being a convertible coupe meant that the roof doesn't fold as easily as the fabric one. These metal roof pieces take up a lot of space, so the cabin had to be shortened, which made the roof small and the trunk big enough for storing it. That works, but the problem is that the Micra was too ugly and, more importantly, too short to make it visually work as well. 
As it is, the CNC looks like it has a growing tumor, with you sitting right in the middle of it. And that's not a good look, no matter how much makeup you put on. It's not a tumor. Number two. Oh, BMW, what have you done? Redesigned your top model to flagship car into a pig with a gargantuan chrome snout? I used to experiment with ugly cars before when Chris Bangle was the lead designer, but this time, it's not an experiment. There's one big reason for this. And the reason is China. China. In China, people like to show off their wealth. Millions of them just recently got out of poverty, some more than others, and they never learned how to deal with money. Restraint is the key. You don't see the Prince of Monaco wearing diamond grills. Yeah! But in China, bigger, shinier, and more in your face is better. And that's why the new Beamer is a pig. Forget all of those keywords BMW is saying when describing the design. Words like emotion, clarity, monolith. Bullshit! The key is money. And the Chinese have it. As for the rest of the world, we just have to deal with it. China. 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 Number one. Obviously, the Prius is hideous. That is clear to everyone looking at that beat-up face. It feels like it's about to start shouting, Adrian! At any moment now. But the fact that the Prius is getting uglier with every generation, have you noticed that? It's really telling us something. And no, it's not for a low drag coefficient, since both these Mercs are better at that. So why then? This is just my theory, but hear me out. Don't you have the feeling that Priuses are bought by people who, or is it Prius I? Let's try it that way. Don't you have the feeling that Prius I are bought by people who not only care about the planet, well, that's great, but also want to lecture you about it? These annoying virtue signaling people who eat grass are also the same people who can't wait to show you just how much better they are than you. Driving a Prius is being like on stage. You can't not see that Prius in traffic because it stands out like a turd in a punch bowl. And that's the reason. Look at me, so I can shame you into buying the same turd of a car. You're basically guilted into being ugly. And there we are, seven ugly cars that had a better reason for being ugly than just having incompetent designers. Which one's the worst? Do you agree with the lists? Did I miss one? Comment below. And if you like cars and toilet humor, why not subscribe to the channel? With your help, I can grow this into something amazing and fun. So yeah, hit the button. And I'll see you in the next one. Cut.